GGI Air 2S review after one month of use. In this video, I will take a closer look at the things that I don't like about the GGI Air 2S. And it goes without saying that this video is not sponsored by GGI, but I think it's important that you know both sides of the coin for you to make the right decision before you go out and spend your hard earned money on a drone. And I know all the fanboys are ready now to attack me with the keyboard and you are more than welcome as this only contributes to the distribution of this video. Welcome to another video, I'm Henrik Olsen and if you want to learn how to make better video with your camera and drone in general and learn a little bit about what DJI is not telling you in their marketing material, then consider subscribing to my weekly tips, tests and tutorials. When we saw the initial pictures of the drone with the new angle top sensors, which by the way looked like a front end of a Porsche 911, everyone thought that these sensors would help the drone when it was flying in an angle. And of course they do to some extent. The problem is that the, where you need them the most is in sport mode and here are all the sensors disabled. So if you decide to fly the drone head on into an obstacle in sport mode, it will definitely crash. Many of you were super excited to learn that you would get access to 60 frames per second in 4K with the DJI Air 2S. But one thing that you need to be aware of, if you switch between 30 and 60 frames per second, you would see a significant crop in the image. This does not make the footage unusable, this is just something that you need to be aware of. For those of you that have seen uh, the videos that I've made uh, around the smart controller, know that I have serious problems using that. I see a quite significant lag in the video feed when I fly the drone, to a such extent that I've decided not to use the smart controller with my Air 2S until DJI has addressed this. I made a few videos around this topic where I tried to sort of eliminate all the causes that could uh, make this happen, but none of the things that I tried helped this out. The funny part or the strange part is if you look through the comments for these videos, you would see that it's not all that has this lagging issue. Some are reporting that the connection is absolutely fine, others are reporting similar issues uh, to me. And for the record, it flies perfectly fine with the Mavic 2 Pro. And some would claim that this is due to uh, the architecture has switched from 32-bit to 64-bit with the DJI Fly app, but I would argue the other way, then everyone would see that problem and this is not the case. But regardless, it's quite a gamble to spend something like six, eight hundred dollars on an age technology like this just to find out that the, the video feed is lacking. So that's definitely not good and definitely something TGI needs to address. And the answer is not a new smart controller. Of course, that would be super nice for the ones of you that haven't bought one yet, but it's quite a bummer to have invested this kind of money in a smart controller and not being able to use it. When I did the initial flight uh, with the Air 2S, I noticed that I got props in the frames and especially master shots were polluted by this uh, phenomenon, which was pretty strange as the recordings was in uh, 1080p and not even at the widest possible uh, resolution. It turned out that it was a setting somewhere inside uh, the app that you only get access to when the drone is airborne that would avoid having props in the frame when doing master shots. It removes the problem for master shots, but it does not remove the problem in general as you will be able to see props in the shots under some conditions when you film in 5.4K 30fps. It is kind of annoying that you pay $1300 for a high-end drone from DJI and then you end up having props in your shots. The layout and the design of the remote is super nice, but there are some limitations that you can't basically fit in something that is much larger than the iPhone Pro Max. So in case you wanna fly with something that's bigger than that, you are forced to go out and buy some third-party accessories that will allow you to mount maybe a tablet or so, if that's what you prefer when you are flying. Many were really disappointed to find out that the, the Air 2S does not have variable aperture, meaning that a diaphragm that can be open and closed in front of the lens to limit the amount of light like we see on the Mavic 2 Pro. I guess DJI left that feature out, saving it for the next generation of the Pro Series. Variable aperture is normally used for two things. One of them is uh, to control the depth of field in your image. I would argue if you're flying high, and far away from things, depth of field has little to no importance. The second thing that you use variable aperture is to control the amount of light that uh, hits the sensor when you're recording video. Many is changing the 180 degree rule to generate motion blur in the footage. But again, I would argue, if you're far away from things and flying slow, 
you won't be able to see the difference. So you could argue how important the variable aperture is on a drone. Is this a deal breaker for you or not? Let me know in the comment. Because the drone didn't have variable aperture, DJI has decided to include a set of ND fillers with the drone. And that's of course a very nice gesture. And by the way, I made a separate video about this showing you when, where and how to use the filters that are provided with the drone. And in case you wanna access that video, you can access it through this card or through a link in the description below. The problem with the filter kit or the range that DJI has included is that the biggest or the highest ND filter, the darkest one is ND32. And that's not even close to being dark enough if you're flying out in a bright sunlight. The basic concept with ND fillers are they should not do anything to your footage. It should not add the saturation. It should not change the coloring, sharpness or anything to your footage. Unfortunately, the quality that DJI has decided to include with the drone does not meet that requirement. I'm seeing differences in the color temperature depending on what filter that I'm using. Especially the ND32 seems to make the footage a lot warmer than the rest. It's super nice that DJI decided to include those, but you, you probably need to go out and spend around $100 extra to get a set of a decent quality. We're all excited getting access to 60 frames per second with 4K and a higher resolution of 5.4K 30 FPS. Unfortunately, none of the tracking features on the drone supports higher frame rates than 30 FPS and resolution higher than 4K. I really like the master shot functionality that DJI has added to the drone. It's really fun and it's really, really versatile with the templates that they have provided. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to render the master shot in higher resolution than 1080p. I know the idea behind master shot is to make fast and easy content for social media, but as a content creator, it could be very nice to include some of these really nice templates as part of your video project. So be prepared to have an upscale version if you decide to use it in a 4K project. I really hope DJI will allow us to export these in 4K in the future. The Air 2S is not C marked, which means that it will turn into a legacy drone by 2023. And with a start weight of 600 gram, this will put the Air 2 at least in Europe in a category with very strict rules about how close you are allowed to fly to people and infrastructure. If you're living in a closely populated area, this would basically render the drone useless after 2023. Why DJI did not C-mark this drone? I don't know. I will let DJI answer that. Active Track 4.0. That should be like a significant improvement into the predecessor. I've been doing some uh, testing, uh, testing uh, the Active Track feature, riding my electric unicycle, and uh, I made a separate video about that. In case you want to access that, you can do that through this card or through a link in the description below. Spoiler: It's not as good as DJI thinks but probably the best option that you will get in Europe as we don't have access to the Skydio 2. The Air 2S has no side sensors and that's actually a bit crazy when you think about the features that DJI is providing. They are providing all these uh, automated flight modes and most of them rely on sideways movement and uh, there are no sensors on the drone to protect it. I know that a lot of you would say, yeah, you need to learn how to fly this uh, without sensors and stuff because real men fly without sensors. Yeah, that's probably right. But you need the sensors when you're using these automated flight modes. I almost wrecked the drone several times uh, because of lacking side sensors uh, playing around uh, with uh, these uh, automated flight modes. So it's really a shame that TGI left out these uh, side sensors uh, because they're probably saving it for the next generation of the Pro model. But you really need them when you're using these automated flight modes. The standard color profile that's included with the drone is only 8-bit. And if you're just using the footage as it is, and you're not planning to do anything with the footage in post-production, it's perfectly fine. But if you want to stretch the colors, maybe change it a little bit, maybe color grade it, there are certain limitations what you can do with 8-bit footage. So if I want to work with the footage, I simply just switch into the D-Log or the HLG, which are both 10-bit color profiles. But the downside to that is that you lose some of the functionality of the drone when you decide to use these two color profiles. For instance, the zoom capabilities, that disappears. It's only available when you're using the 8-bit standard color profile. The flight time is claimed for 31 minutes, and we all know that this is a pretty optimistic bet, but uh, I seem not to be able to get anything that is above 25 minutes with the three batteries that I have. And if I zip around with the drone in sport mode and such, we know that the power consumption is higher, then we're closer to the 20 minute mark. 
which I kind of feel is pretty short, especially if you have flown the Autel Evo 2 Pro 6K edition that stays forever in the sky on a single charge. Even compared to the Mini 2, the flight time feels significantly shorter. We're all super excited when we learned that the, the Air 2S would support Ocusync 3, which is a low latency format that was introduced with the, the GGI FPV drone. So all of us, including my internal source, assumed that there, there would be support for the new version 2 of the goggles which is not the case as it is right now. But that doesn't make sense at all. Why would you upgrade the drone for a low latency format and not include support for the goggles? The drone is perfectly well operated with the Ocusync 2 standard. There was not like a big latency flying that and that would be perfectly sufficient. So upgrading the transmission for low latency does not really make sense. So I still think that we will see support for the goggles at some point. For some reason, DJI always have problems keeping the horizon level on their drones. And the Air 2S is no exception. It seems my horizon is off, at least sometimes, it's not all the times, and I have tried to calibrate the gimbal on a flat surface to make sure that it's level. So I'm sorry to inform you that the, the Air 2S seems to be suffering, at least my sample, from the drunken horizon, as my good friend Sean Oz would say. Be aware, gaining access to 5.4K 30fps at 150 megabit per second would eat up a lot of storage on your SD card, as well as posing a serious challenge for your editing software when you're going to work with the footage. To prevent you from running into that limitation, I have decided to upload some sample footage in the three color profiles standard. DLog and HLG to the TechDrone Media website so you can download those clips and test out for yourself if you can edit the footage. I've included some pictures as well in both JPEG and RAW that will allow you to assess the quality. Link is in the description below. This guy, this remote was almost driving me crazy at some point. Even though I had everything hooked up like it's supposed to be, I had camera feed, I had ready to take off permissions, it was beeping like crazy and I couldn't make it stop. And for some random reason, by fiddling around with the, the connection and the order that I, I was setting everything up, I could uh, fly the drone without the remote beeping. But for some reason, I've never seen that before, I got a remote that was out of calibration when I received it. It's not a big deal, you can just calibrate the sticks to fix the issue, but if you're new to the hobby and you encounter this uh, the first time that you use the drone, it can be very frustrating if you don't know what to do about it. I do want to mention, if you have spent a significant amount of money on ND fillers for your Air 2, you will not be able to use those on the Air 2S because of the bigger camera. You can reuse the props and you can reuse the battery, but the fillers are not an option. DJI is adding more than $300 on top of the Fly More combo if you want to purchase the Air 2S compared to the Air 2. Looking at the additional features that you're getting with the Air 2S, does that really justify $300 extra? I seriously think DJI is pushing the price game here, especially as uh, the drone is not C-marked and in Europe will turn into a legacy drone by 2023. So these are all the negative things that I have around the DJI Air 2S that might influence your buying decision before you go out and spend your hard earned money. Is there something that I left out or something that you disagree? Then let me know in the comment below. I'm pretty sure that you will. So does this mean that there are no positive things to say about this drone? No, not at all. It has a lot of good stuff going for it. And I actually, prior to this video, released one with all the things that I really like about this drone. And I highly encourage you to watch both videos before you make up your mind. In case you missed that video, you can access it through this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.